here's another helpful hint, and I wanted to actually videotape this for you to see. Uh, this helpful hint is in regards to using JW Undercover. As you can see here, I have several uh, MDF pieces that I'm going to be teaching at the Hoop Convention, and I have to prepare all these pieces. And base coding can be a bit of a pain. And also, what a lot of people experience when using JW Undercover is air bubbles. And I found a really, I found a really cool way to use JW Undercover and apply this as a base coat and eliminate all those pesky air bubbles. What I have first is a, a velour paint applicator. Now, I got this one. You can find these at True Value. You can find these at Home Depot. And what it is, actually, there's a handle that this slides onto, and you're, it's used for edging on walls. And it has a nice fuzzy nap to it, and it's also very thin, so you're not going to be wasting a lot of the JW. And it's also excellent because when you're, when you're done with your base coating, all you have to do is scrape the edge of this, and all the JW goes back into the bottle, so the waste is like virtually non-existent. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do this. What I did with the, with the uh, MDF first is uh, we took a, a damp rag and wet, wiped over all of them because after uh, they were manufactured and after cut, they had a lot of dusty residue. So what I'm going to do now is use my JW, and what I did do is take a stir stick and stir this really, really good because a lot of it settles on the bottom. So I want to show you up close and personal now how I apply this. I'm taking the pad and I use this dry, I didn't put any water on it at all. And what I'm doing is I'm putting an amount of the undercover on this pad. And you can see that it doesn't drip, I don't have to worry about a rolling pan. And now I'm going to take my MDF board and I'm going to start to apply it. And what I want to reinforce too, let me set this down so I can work with it on the table, is as I'm applying this, you notice that I'm not taking the, the end of the applicator and working it up like this. I'm actually taking the flat of it and I'm smoothing. Now also what I want to point out too, you notice that I didn't start at the upper edge of the wood piece up here. I started down here. The reason being, if I were to take this paint applicator and load it with the JW and start up here, I would actually scrape and end up with a big blob of it sticking at the end. So what I do is I'll go like this, feather it down, virtually no air bubbles, no excessive brush strokes, smooth it, and then turn the piece and then go like this. So now when I'm applying this, I'm not getting a big blob up here and it's a more of an even distribution. Now, as I'm doing this too, I'm being very, very cautious of feathering, so I'm not stopping and starting halfway through the piece. So now I just went back and made sure I got nice coverage. And watch this as I'm finishing. Feather it out. And for a first coat, this is absolutely awesome. You can see there's no air bubbles. You can feather it really nicely, and I know I'm going to be applying a second coat, so any of the little strokes that do show are not going to impact anything. Now, I have a piece that I have over here that has uh, the first coat, and I want to show you what I'm going to do for the second coat. <coughs> I apologize for the mess too. We're in our garage right now. That's where I do a lot of my base coating. So I'm taking the same applicator, putting a little bit more of the JW onto it. Notice no drips on the bottle. And now for my second coat, I'm going to do the same thing. Apply it, feather it out, make sure the flat of the pad stays on the surface. Let me get this sideways for you. So as I'm drawing this, I'm feathering it, and I'm not using the pad straight up and down like this. I've got the full flat of it to help me smooth it out and make sure that I have no air bubbles. Now, as soon as I got done with it, as soon as I get done with this, I want to show you the best part is at the very end when you're done base coating. If you use a sponge roller, 
you have a hard time getting all of the, the paint back into the bottle, watch this. I can take this sideways and go like this and little, literally squeegee all of the excess JW off of the pad and back into the jar with no mess and no runs. You let this dry, make sure you wait 24 hours for it to cure, then you can go right to your inking and rouging, or your inking you have to spray before you rouge. Thank you very much, and please don't forget to email us or call us if you have any questions.